What is going on, Raider Nation? It's JT coming at you with a, another episode of the Raider Cast East Coast pregame show with my friend. He's back, NJ Raider Nation. What's going on, NJ? Yeah, I missed you last week. Yeah, it was the pregame. I was excited. And then post game, I wanted to die. <laughs> maybe, it maybe, was bad. maybe, maybe because we didn't get our show in last week. That's why the Raiders performed the way they did. I, I, I mean, I agree. Maybe you would have, <laughs> maybe you would have said something that maybe the team would have heard at some point. Maybe, um, and they would have been like, "Oh, we should do that." Me and you should be out there on the field. It's true. I could, you know, put me in at at corner at this point. I could cover better than Anthony Abert. I mean. I can't be any worse. <laughs> and, and I'm I'm stepping in this coaching because that's where that's where I'm putting my blame on. <laughs> yeah. I, I just I'm frustrated with the uh, the coaching um, as a whole. I just but you know to be fair, you got to give them time, and I understand that. But it's just yeah. frustrating seeing oh, yeah. the talent that we have. It just seems like they're not clicking. Um, it's, it's just they're not studying enough. I don't know. But it, like I said, it takes time. But it's it's frustrating to watch because we have good guys that mm -hmm. shouldn't be playing the way they are. Oh, I, I mean, I completely agree. I mean, when you have Devontae Adams, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, Derek Carr, you have a, I mean, not a good O-line, you have Josh Jacobs. Uh, you expect the offense to at least, you know, not lay goose eggs against the bad Saints defense, but here we are. Um, I think this past game definitely proved that the run game was really the saving grace of our offense and really the only reason why we won games is because of, the, the, of Josh Jacobs absolutely destroying teams um and if we face any any sort of competent team against the run it's just not going to go well and this week we face a competent team against the run so definitely a worrying thing because i didn't really think about it but i was like wait a minute they have two really good linebackers and uh trayvon walker and devon lloyd uh so definitely worried about that <laughs> yeah i mean when you look at the, you know jacksonville with their record two and six you think that's an easy game but it's really not i mean they have they have some talented guys all over the field um especially on the defensive side of things mm -hmm. you know first pick overall josh allen uh of the draft in april i mean he's performing pretty well and um yeah they, trayvon I mean, walker trayvon walker oh sorry sorry trayvon no, walker good, and josh good, allen was the year before right he was 2019. Yeah, he was 2019. The 20. Okay, so two. Okay, three years. But um, I mean, they have good guys. And, oh, absolutely. And uh, so you know, with with that being said, record aside, it's actually going to be kind of a tough game for the Raiders. And when you start comparing stats, they're very similar to us too. I mean, uh -huh. Derek Carr um, uh, head to head versus um, uh, Trevor Lawrence is. They're, they're very similar. I mean, they're both, you know, not throwing many touchdown passes. They both have quite a few interceptions. Their QB rating is very similar. It's within a point mm -hmm. of each other. So, you know, Derek Carr need, this is one of those games that like, I'll be paying attention to the stat line, seeing like QB for QB and uh, Derek Carr better come out on top because, um, you know, mm -hmm. I know Trevor Lawrence is so good and being the, you know, number one draft pick and everything, but there, this is a game where Derek Carr needs to uh, step up and perform. I agree, and um, I think that the fact that the offense struggled last week with that, with taking the run game away, um, it put a lot of you know obviously a lot of pressure on Derek Carr to you know make up for that, and he didn't play great. And you could say like there was a lot of drops from the receivers and stuff like that. And yeah, sure there was some, but he wasn't really hitting them in the right spot. He was kind of throwing them high, so they had to jump for the ball. They had or that he overthrew them or. He just didn't have time sometimes to throw the ball. Um, he didn't make plays with his legs, um, even if, you know, he couldn't really escape pressure pr well at all. So if it comes down to if they take away the run game, I think our offense is going to absolutely struggle. And I think they will take uh, take away the run game. Uh, I mean, looking at the offenses, uh, they actually have more yards a game than we do. Um, by 23 yards on average. Uh, it doesn't help that we, you know, score. We only had like 183 total yards last week, but they have a lot of rushing yards a game. They have a decent amount of uh, pass yards per game. Um, so our run defense should do pretty decently against their rush. Uh, in all honesty, we have a top 10 rush defense, which is weird to think about. Um, but <laughs> considering how bad our defense is, the one bright spot is we haven't allowed a hundred yard rusher from an individual this season, and we it's pretty good. Our top yeah. ten in and rush yards a game, like allowing. 
So, like, in a good way. Top 10 in a good way. Yeah. It's, <laughs> um, they don't allow a lot of rush yards. Um, so that's, like, the positive, and they, that's a lot of their offense, too, is the rush is the rush with Travis Etienne, and they used to have James Robinson, but not anymore. But in the past game, Travis Etienne is definitely a weapon. Yeah, um, and that that is a good thing with our defense being good at uh, run stopping because – Running is big this year. A lot of teams mm-hmm. are running um, all over the field, and specifically, um, running backs are having big games. Like I feel like mm-hmm. I'm constantly looking at um, different stats, and especially fantasy, you know, puts you in tune with it. But running backs are putting up hundred plus games a, a lot time. this year. I feel yeah. like, um, and different guys too. So it's like you know, second string. I mean. Uh, so it's, it, that's good for our defense to be good with that, because if a lot of teams are doing that, you want to be able to counter that. Yeah. But with that said, you know, we're not, we're not, they're still scoring and yeah. we're still losing. So it's not really helping, but, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, this team needs to turn it around turn it around soon. I, I almost think playoffs is something that's, you know, not even, not even too worried about, but, uh, just, yeah. just want a couple wins at this point now. Yeah, um, I think I texted you. I was saying that some of the only things I'm looking forward to this season, mm-hmm. the rest of the season, one of the things I want to do is just at least beat the Broncos one more time. Yeah, um, that's, that's pretty much the only like um, thing I want to see because like at this point, you have a team that's not performing on offense. The defense is consistently bad, um, but they're consistent in how bad they are. They're not giving up more, really more than 24 points a game, which is somewhat impressive. They've only given up once. Um, and it was the Chiefs. Uh, the offense is inconsistent. Uh, the run games on, they're, they'll play really well. The run games off, they're not they're not going to win. Um, so I guess that's consistent. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I, at this point, you have a top ten pick. Um, I think I was also telling you this. Like, honestly, get the top ten pick. I don't want to tank. I want to try and win. Like, I'm not saying we should try and lose. And if we have a chance to make the playoffs, make the push, I guess. Because that could that could be good to make the playoffs again. But if we don't really have a chance, I really do want to have another seven and ten season, eight and nine, nine and eight season, and have a mid to late first late mid first round pick and get and not be able to trade up for really anyone, not be able to trade back with anyone. Because if you have a top ten pick in this draft, you could probably trade down and get a haul which is what the dolphins did um and look at them now uh the bears did it i'm pretty did the bears do it i don't know but they're they're, like you trade away picks um Mm -hmm. especially top 10 picks and get a haul um and that's that's how you can build a team especially pretty quickly yeah you know you're not totally wrong but i just it's hard for me to think like it's hard it's hard to root yeah, you know, I, you know, I want as many wins as we can get. Um, yeah, but I, I, I do understand what you're saying, of course. But I mean, let's look at it, right? We're two and five. I'm gonna look real quick, just being very optimistic. One, two, <laughs> three, four, five, maybe six, seven, and then maybe eight more wins. So plus two. Let's say we finish ten and. 10 and seven is that gonna make it is that gonna allow us a play playoff berth i'm not even sure you know i don't think 10 and seven is is we and that's being one last game i mean i went through the schedule real quick right there but i'm just thinking like you know we're sitting two and five but you know what i i i looked at this the other day right yeah. our division and let me know what you think our division we're sitting at two and five the broncos are sitting at three and four i don't mm-hmm. know about their losses i just know their wins for sure broncos have three wins Chargers have four wins, yeah. and then the Chiefs have five. We are three games back from the – I mean, it's kind of crazy to say, but we're three games back from the Chiefs that are in first place with five wins. Yeah. It's – when you say – when I don't know. When I think about it like that, it's very early. Say Chiefs have three bad weeks and we fix everything and just kind of win out, right? I, I, yeah. I know. Even the Chiefs having three, three bad weeks is – you know, they're playing pretty well. But chasing that top spot – at this point, I don't think is the craziest thing to say yet. It's definitely that second spot. I think we could we could Chargers Chargers. I think are having a very bad uh, hiccup right now. I think they're it's a very bumpy road right now. I think Herbert's getting a lot of crap um, for messing up. Similar to how like Car, you know, people love Car and then they hate Car. I think yeah. Herbert's starting to Chargers fans seem like they're doing that right now with Herbert. Um, so 
I don't know. I think the division maybe it's not up for grabs so <laughs> totally, but I just I I, I like. I, I will see. We'll see what happens. You, you I, what I'm I I appreciate your optimism. Uh, it's something I don't have right now. I I I, I try not to give myself like that. Yeah. Because I don't want to be disappointed. But if you look at the Chiefs, I don't think they're gonna the falter. They have Tennessee, Jacksonville, Chargers, Rams, Cincinnati, Denver, Houston, Seattle, Denver, us. I don't see three losses there really. Maybe I mean, look at what the they did Cincinnati, too. maybe, but I don't see. Who was the game that they um like blew up to? Was it the Falcons? Who they lose? We, yeah, uh, the the Chiefs. The Chiefs. They lost to the Colts. Colts. And that's Colts. It. Yeah. And like one of the losses is a random fluke game against the Colts, and then Buffalo. Every other game has been, you know, it was 44-21, 27-24, 41-31, 30-29, Those are all all their wins. Yeah. Well, look. All they, the, saying, the hardest part of their schedule is over. All I'm saying is the division's up for the taking. You're saying tank for the draft picks. Ooh, pick a side. <laughs> I don't think the – yeah, really, just in the comments, pick a side. But yeah. <laughs> in looking at even the Chargers schedule going forward – they have Atlanta and they got the hurt, so they might lose Atlanta. Maybe they have San Francisco, which could be a tough game. They have Kansas City again, which they'll the most likely lose because they just can't seem to win. Uh, then they have Arizona. They have us again. Miami, Tennessee, Indy, Rams, Denver. Obviously not a cakewalk schedule, but I have more confidence in them winning a little bit more than us, so that we can't take that second place spot. And then looking at our schedule, I'm not even going to worry about Denver because realistically they're not. They're not doing anything. Um, looking at our schedule, yes, we're 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 favored in a lot of those games, but I re- I don't know if we're gonna beat Jacksonville at this point. I don't know if we can beat Indy, especially if we lose to Jacksonville. If we lose to Jacksonville, I don't see us winning many more games. We don't. I don't think we win against Indy. Maybe we get a fluke two win streak against Indianapolis and Denver. I don't think we beat Seattle. Seattle just their offense looks really good right now. Mm-hmm. The Chargers, I don't know if we beat them. Rams, I don't know. Patriots, I don't know. Pittsburgh, probably because they look like ass. San Francisco, probably not. And then the Chiefs last the last week is um if they sit their starters, maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> I if they're if they're competing with the Chargers for number one, they're not sitting their starters. They're gonna just or trying to compete for the number one seed. They're not going to sit there, starters. They're going to destroy us. They're going to lay fifty on us. Um, so I, I don't see that many. I see, but I, maximum I see four more wins, and that brings us to six and six and eleven. That, not at max. Can't say that at max. Oh, I'm saying, I'm saying at max. I'm saying at max. That's six, minimum four wins. No. Look, oh. look, before at the bye week, right before yeah, yeah. Uh, we came back, people were saying this is the easy stretch and uh, we should be good. And Houston, you know, we could have beaten Houston a little more, could have performed a little better on um, offense. We didn't have our show last week, so we didn't get to talk about it. But I think we could have played a little better versus Houston. But we still won, you know, by almost by 18 points. Um, But then the New Orleans last week, obviously. So, right, getting shut out is bad. It's, It's, you know, you can't even, it's inexcusable. But maybe... You know, that flu was really going around and everyone was like not, you know, hurting, whatever. But it's one game. So now you can't disregard the rest of the, the easy stretch that people were saying. This is going to be a good game. This is it's going to to see how the Raiders bounce back after getting shut out versus the Jacksonville Jaguars, yeah. who I think are sneaky good. This is going to be this is going to be the game to watch. And this this will tell a lot about this team. Come next week on our show. If we do lose to Jacksonville, especially if we lose like that, I'll I'll definitely be probably jumping on your <laughs> yeah. shit. But as of right now, I'm still feeling okay. I I, I want to, you know, That's I want to hope that we can yeah. get a bunch of these easy wins still, you know, because we're we still are yeah. a good team. But you know, we'll see after this Sunday. Even after this three game stretch of Jacksonville, Indy, Denver, I still won't be, even if we win all three of those games. And if they're convincing, I might be more optimistic. And if their offense looks, you know, how it should, um, you know, looks really good, other than the run game, like I want to see the pass game really flourish. Um, I, if we don't win convincingly in any, in, you know, in these games, the next three games, I'm, I, I, I don't know if I can really still be optimistic because, it comes down this season. 
we knew the defense was probably going to be bad. There was a lot of hope that like there was a lot of, you know, sophomore growth um, from some, you know, draft picks last year, like Diablo and Morig. Um, needed a lot of growth from just players. And then we added players and we're like, defensive tackle looks really bad. Linebackers look solid ish. If Jayon Brown and Diablo can step up, we know Perryman's his 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 lack of pass coverage has made up for his really good run stuffing ability which he still has um you we thought chandler jones was going to be a difference maker he's not a difference maker he, he has a half Crazy. a sack and one t, one tfl and like a few a few tackles so it it, it, it it really is chandler jones has been very very disappointing no matter what you know analysts or film people say he's been disappointing in my opinion um but you knew the defense was probably going to be rough. It, there was no, you, if you went to the season thinking that there was going to be a top 10 unit or even close to that, you, you were just on hopium at that point, <laughs> but to expect the offense to be a top 10 unit was everyone was saying that like, that was just the, the belief you had Derek Carr passing to his old college friend, Devonte Adams. You have Josh Jacobs in the backfield. You added some good run running backs, young running backs and in, in Zamir white. You added Amir Abdullah, who's pretty dynamic. Brendan Boland's even, uh, you know, people don't like him, obviously, but he, he's still a dynamic running back. He can catch the ball and do pretty well with it. Um, you have Darren Wall, you have Hunter Renfro, you got Matt Collins, who people didn't, weren't high on, but he ended up performing pretty well. You have all these weapons, and then and the O-line's playing better than last season. You can't say the, the O-line, the O-line really couldn't have been worse than last year. Last year's O-line was trash. Better so, than the first couple of weeks. Yeah, so... It, but again, like if we could perform on offense last year with a mm-hmm. trash O line, we should be performing on offense this year with a a little bit better O line. Yeah. So true. the the biggest disappointment, in my opinion, is obviously the offense, and obviously the defense has been bad. I'm not saying the defense is not at fault for any of you our just games. Expected it I it, you somewhat so. expect, especially after the first game, it's like all right, this defense is clearly not close to being where it should, where we want it to be. So I'm just going to temper my, you know, expectations for them. But the offense needs to be better. That is where we win games. If you can't have our offense score more than 24 points in a game, which is what our defense is allowing, then our then our offense is a disappointment in my opinion. So we need to I need to see more from the offense to really be confident that we can go on a run. Yeah, uh you know, going off of that, we improved all these positions. We brought Adams in, brought these players in have a new coaching staff that a lot of people were, you know, pretty excited about, especially going into week one, you know, a lot of people were excited about, Mm -hmm. but, and whether it's just lack of time or, you know, Josh McDaniels had his other stint as head coaching and didn't do too well. Something's not working. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to blame the players when they're coming off of a season last year where they went to the playoffs under such bizarre circumstances yeah. and they still managed to get wins f- finish um the, the uh, win the last four or five games of the season four, so four games yeah. last four games of the season win all four of them make it to the playoffs of course that game you know we lost in the wild card round but even that game was close and that was to the super bowl contender so it's very hard to bring a lot of those players you know into the next year add more people that you would argue you know unarguably say is talented adams Mm. although jones has been a little disappointment but it's hard to blame the players when you know you come from last season so i i maybe maybe not like there's some blame of course but i'm just looking at really the coaching is like kind of a big issue here yeah and so that's the other thing too is like we don't know where McDaniels is at yet. Like, we don't know how good he's going to be. Like, people can say, oh, we know he's going to be a bad car, uh, bad coach. You don't really know that yet. He's at a half, he's not even been in the building a year. Like, yeah. you can't say Zeke was bad at GM because he had one bad, he, literally his one bad signing this offseason, in my opinion, is Chandler Jones. Mm-hmm. And that was like, and that's it, really. Like, every other move has been pretty solid. Like, extending are the contracts that he made. Um, are very easy to get rid of, which is huge because you know if they're not if the older players like Carr, Waller, Renfro, uh, well, Renfro's not older, but you know what I mean, Chandler Jones, it, it, Devonta Adams, if they don't perform, you have easy outs, which is good. Um, you have you know they didn't have a first round pick, they didn't have a second round pick, they had a third round pick, they got 
uh, a defensive, an O lineman, Parham, has been really good so far. Um, so you have all these things, and it's like you can't say this. Co- like obviously, the coaching staff is going to struggle because this is brand new for everybody. The, mm-hmm. the new systems for both sides of the ball, um, new players for the coaches to work with. Um, they, you know, McDaniel's comes from Patriots. Uh, they they didn't have a great offense. They had a pretty solid offense last year, but they had a pretty good O line. You know, they had you know Mac Jones being pretty good as a rookie overall. So it's just it's a conglomeration of so much new just not working out which is why i think the coaching staff deserves time people are saying they should be fired yeah. after this season which i don't know if i agree with it's obviously very disappointing and obviously puts them on a hot seat to perform next year really like really well next year um but yeah i gotta give them gotta give them time for now absolutely and and you know that is the excuse you know yeah. like if if that wasn't a thing then it'd be like okay yeah there's no reason to keep these guys nothing's working but as a head coach especially a new coaching staff entirely that takes that takes time i mean it yep. takes you know that is the one thing you just you just need time to learn the plays teach the different schemes that's mm-hmm. and that's fine you know I, i'm completely on that uh boat too i don't think you should he should be fired after the season um yeah at all uh, it, it does take time, but I do think like, I don't know. I, I, so it's just not, it's not good right now. Like there should be just like the play calling seems bad. I mean, it's, it's very simple. Like the, the, um, end around runs to Devonte Adams on third and one, like it's, that's too much. It's, yeah. it's way too much play simple football is always the you know the fundamental the the foundation like just stick with that on those third and ones you don't need to be all fancy especially yeah. if if everybody's not clicking and, and everybody's not on the same page anyway why mm-hmm. are you throwing in a complex play like that you know, know. you're gonna have the offensive line um all over the place and then they're gonna be holding like stick to standard you know basic football and i think we'd be much better off especially just coming in it's the you know we're eight games into the season or seven games into the season and we're doing these complex plays that aren't working out at all it's it's embarrassing like it's, it's embarrassing it just looks bad like yeah <laughs> that's where you should start you know just yeah. go back to stand just go back to your basic football basic plays we have a really good team we managed to make it to the playoffs last year without a main head coach um and you know that basically in in my opinion that's putting the the game in the players hands and you know we won a bunch of those games so and you know we didn't we didn't kill any um opponents it was it was you know tough games and stuff but we ended up winning so just man he's got to put more at this point i think he's got to put more faith into their car and the offense and maybe you know just give a little more flexibility in terms of um all the audibles and what he sees and what works. I mean, the car has been with a couple of these guys now for three years, you know, yeah. like Renfro Waller. So let, let's just let them let, I just think coaching is too much of an issue right now, but hopefully it changes. Yeah. This will be obviously a big test. Like, can they respond? Like, can the offense really pop off after, you know, laying a goose egg against an overall bad Saints defense? Um, can they can they destroy the Jacksonville Jaguars, which we should expect we should be able to do? Because, uh, but again, their their defense is pretty underrated. They only allow twenty points a game. They have really good rushing defense. Passing defense is a little not as good. Um, let's take a look at their rush, uh, pass defense and rush defense. Pass defense they allow. A little less than us, 237 yards per game, which we allow 258. Actually, that's a big jump. It's 237, the next closest team is 252. So they, they are pretty good uh, against the pass overall. Rush defense, uh, they are worse than us, but only by a little bit. They only allow 109 yards per game. So again, they're very stingy defense when it comes to the rush, which is our main offensive thing right now is we're really good at the run. They don't allow a lot of points for a game. They only allow 19.8, which is, you know, 20 points. Um, and they're pretty good against the pass. So this is a big test for our offense to go against a overall solid Jacksonville defense. And we also need to see if the defense can step up and maybe make some plays, which I think they will. For some reason, against bad teams, they just get defensive touchdowns for no reason. Against Houston, they got a defensive touchdown. And against Broncos, they got a defensive touchdown, you know, 
first time since like 2013 it felt like um or whatever the the, the date was but yeah yeah well i i think coming off that shutout they need to put up from like 30 plus points to to feel good about it cuz i agree you know if they if they win or lose if they put up like 15 16 or mm-hmm. not six you know just like it's 17 or 20 points I'm not gonna feel that good they need to come out run the ball yep. pass the ball score um a bunch of times just do it over and you know end up and leave with a win and you know people like you hopefully will feel a little better and then yeah the optimism can grow again and then we'll get let down again but then like that's what i was that's what i was like alluding to earlier is like if we come out and only score 20 points get the win like yay like we won like great mm-hmm. but we only scored 20 points against the Jaguars, which again is their average, but our offense should be able to get more than 20 points against the Jaguars. And then going to Indy, if, again, if we only score like 20 to 24 points, I'm not going to be super confident because they don't have a good defense either. Again, Denver, if we don't destroy Denver again, <laughs> I would be very disappointed. Um, Seattle's obviously a tough game, but we need to blow out the next three games. Um, at least you know, win convincingly. Maybe the score, maybe the box score gets a little close because garbage time touchdowns or whatever. But we need to be feeling comfortable about a win going into like the last five minutes of a game, like we did with Denver, like we did with um, uh, Texans. Yeah, it's it's so crazy looking at the uh, just average points per game for the first six games and then just putting up zero last week. It's just insane to me. I mean, I just, it's so crazy. I, I, so bad, (laughs) so bad, but I, I just, I really hope, you know, Sunday they can score a bunch of points and make everyone feel a little better about this team again, because, and that's why I'm just, I'm just hoping like, I just think basic coaching, like basic plays will do the job. You don't need to be fancy when running the ball. And J- Jacobs mm-hmm. has been running so well. So just, yeah. you know. Just give him the ball. Give him the ball and then have the defense cheat up. And that's when Adams, Matt Collins, they'll be open downfield. Waller, yeah. Renfro. We have so many weapons. We should not be <laughs> We should not be losing 24-0 to zero ever. Yeah. That is just horrendous. Especially, like, losing – fine last week but we didn't score which was like if we lost last week i'd be disappointed but the fact that we got zero points it's like come on now are you serious but another thing is like um waller might be out again i mean he's questionable but he was questionable last week and ended up not playing so i don't think he's gonna be back for another few weeks like you know Mm -hmm. how long it's taken killing uh, keenan allen still not playing like he's he's been injured with a hamstring all season Mm -hmm. so we'll see what happens with that um I hope he plays, but he probably, I don't think he's going to end up playing. Like they say questionable, but he's going to be a game time decision no matter what. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I don't think he's going to play either. Um, yeah. I think that's one of those things they just hold out, you know? So yeah. defense is plan for different things, but, uh, but you know, not, not having Waller in there, it, it, it is a big difference. Like I saw people uh, wanting him to get traded before the deadline and stuff. I, I think Waller is a really big, big piece of the offense, even mm-hmm. if he's not actually touching the ball. Like his, you know, his blocking's been better, has gotten much better over the years, much better. But his presence alone is just like, yeah, he's that big dick energy they need to keep track of. Like he's <laughs> just so good. Yeah. No, he, he, he really is. Um, and, and that's exactly, that's exactly correct. Like where they need to know where he is on the field at all times. He's one of those guys and that, that helps. Now the drops that he's been having the the couple of weeks um, in the mm-hmm. beginning of the season that was just bad. But that's not who he is. Like the, he, no. he usually has good hands. So that I was getting really frustrated with that. But you know I wasn't calling for him to get traded. But I mean yeah. the drops were bad. But hopefully that you know gets figured out um, mm-hmm. within within himself uh, when he by the time he gets back. But yeah. yeah, I mean the injury. I don't know. I think he'll he'll at least he'll definitely be out this week. I think I could see him maybe coming back for next week, or mm-hmm. if they want to keep him out for the Colts, then they bring him back uh, versus Denver. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think we should just let him heal it because he's older. You, you don't want him to risk keep re-injuring it and re-injuring it, and he's never going to get better. So just let him rest it. Um, don't force him out there because. Honestly, whether or not he's out there, we need to perform. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, um, that's true. But I do think we perform better when he is out oh, there. I, yeah, I agree with that. It's just like we don't want to rush him back just because we need him or whatever. Yeah, we need yeah, to yeah, just yeah, of course. Do it. 
Um, but yeah, before we go, what is your final score predictions for this game? Uh, what did I say? Uh, I said it somewhere. I think I'm going to go. I hope it's what I said before, but 32 20 Raiders or 32 17 Raiders. 32 17. I'm going to go 24 to 20 Raiders. <laughs> you talked all game about about them. Needing I don't to have score, confidence that they're going to score, score too much. That's the thing. So... They need to score more, but they need to prove me that they can score more points before I start giving them 30 point per game again. Yeah. What'd you uh, say? Uh, 24 to 20 24 Raiders. 20, 20. But I can also see it being 24 to 20 Raiders lose. <laughs> that is the score I could also see happening. <laughs> yeah. Well, but yeah, 24 20 is the the official JT score, and yours is 32 to 20. So 30. we think they're going to score 20 points, Jacksonville. So that's, that's a consistent. It's just a matter of how well the offense plays. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, hopefully, hopefully it goes that way. Yeah. Well, let us know down in the comments what you guys think will happen. Let us know who will win, who will lose, score predictions, all that stuff. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out uh, NJ Rare Nation's channel as well. It'll be linked down in the description. Um, also, check them out on Twitter. Go give them a follow at NJ Rare Nation Zero. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Condor Season on Instagram and TikTok. I'm not active on TikTok at all. I got to get back into it. <laughs> um, but Instagram, I'm a bit more active. But, but definitely give a follow on Twitter. That's where I'm mostly at. Um, thank you guys so much for 200 subscribers. That's amazing. I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, you know, big thanks to NJ Ray Nation as well because you know he's he's been with me with this pregame show for you know I don't even know when our first one was. Was it the first game? No, it wasn't the first game. I don't think. We, I think I it was remember. after the first game. Yeah, I think it, I think our first one was for the Cardinals game. Mm -hmm. I want to say, but yeah, a shout out to him. So definitely go give him subs uh, 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 subscribed. He has a new video, out, which is pretty awesome. When he played the VR game, uh, the mm -hmm. football game, that was pretty fun to watch. So definitely go check that out. Um, thank you guys again for watching. Thank you for two hundred. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day and peace out, Raider Nation. <laughs>